I like this costume because you can add emotions. Like, look, I'm a happy man. And then, oh, what is this? Oh, it's the CD. <laughs> Stupid. <sighs> hey, this is YBR, and today I have something a little bit special. So this is a video that I thought would be lost forever because I thought I lost some of the original footage for it. Then I was digging around through some old backups and I found the original footage. So I was finally able to piece this thing together for an official release. So without further ado, here it is. Hey, this is YBR and friends with Deus Ex. A while ago, we made a video where we had to complete an objective in Infra as fast as we possibly could. Infra is my game. I love that game. Now we're going to move on to Nathan's favorite game, which is Deus Ex. And for this one, the requirements were kind of confusing. So first we had to go to the docks and talk to the bum there. Then we had to free a guy named Gunther who was locked in a prison. And to finish it up, we had to talk to the terrorist leader. So let's go ahead and introduce the team. It's the same as before. My name's Nathan. My runs are labeled as Mikado and Mikado Contingency, just in case uh, Carter decides that I was breaking the rules. I was within the ladder, maybe not the spirit. Uh, we'll see. Hi, my name is Carter. I'm labeled as Krieger on screen. Uh, I was the one that set the rules. And let's see if Nathan cheated. And we are going and I run so much faster thanks to my graphic settings, but it's just an illusion. Oh, Carter jumped over it. Yeah, no, I'm... Gotta save those microseconds, man. Gotta take the special stuff. You just gotta Ooh. fly through Paul's dialogue with the scroll wheel and just slam <laughs> enter. Ah, that's where you guys made your first mistake. The best strategy is you don't talk to Paul. Did you just run right past him, Ryan? Yeah, he's chasing me right nice. now. He just chases me the whole time. I tried that a bunch, but he kept catching me. I tried it, but my strategy was instead I focused on... I needed the crossbow for my strategy, so I needed to grab the crossbow from him. Luckily, I don't know how to use the crossbow, so I didn't need to worry about that. Check out this quick prod. Check it out. Ready? Watch this. Bam. Knocked him down. We're already going two different paths, so you guys went straight through and used the taser way more. I didn't use the taser at all. And for me, the taser was like the main weapon. Yeah, this is looking like another loss for me where I lose by an embarrassing amount of time. You guys are ahead of me right now, though, aren't you? Yeah, I'm definitely, this is definitely a mess up for me. Oh, you got the exploding gun. Neat. See, I got, I got the crossbow and I kept using the sound to distract the enemies and run by them. My strategy is very simple. Never stop moving. Always be hitting W. I pretty much never stopped moving either throughout my entire run. It is a short run. Like, even though I'm sh I lost by an embarrassing amount, I know I only clocked in at around like three something. All right, look at my video real quick and watch this. Hey, Paul. Shoot this guy for me. And he do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? I actually didn't try to avoid Paul because I was like, eventually I'm going to have to turn around and he's going to catch me. That's smart, though. I didn't think that I could just trick Paul into killing some guy. Especially when Paul has his spiel at the beginning of the game where he says, uh, you know, don't kill anybody, JC. It's still people out there. JC, please don't kill them. So you know what else Paul did? He opened up this door. What? Thanks, Paul. Wow. No, okay. that's, 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 that's somebody. That's crazy. Oh, you guys, you guys lockpicked it. I'm an idiot, and I actually tried to hack the console. God damn it. I mean, <laughs> darn it. Frick. I don't know what you're talking about. I just walked through the open door. And then me and Nathan, we got the boom on the next door. You can break the door? Yeah, did you? I don't know. That's what, that's what the rules thing was. Did, did you have to talk to him or not? No, I didn't end up talking to him simply because it was a combat situation and he just wouldn't talk to me. Oh, okay. Cause I, that was what the contingency was. I didn't know if you wanted to talk to him or not. Well, you got really lucky with that door, Ryan. That wasn't that wasn't Paul. Hey, you didn't put a time on yours. Oh. Oh. Disqualified. Wow. Congratulations, Carter. You get second place. I got third place. No, because he's disqualified for no timer. Hey, my contingency beat you, though, with the talking to... I talked to him, too, and gave him my knife. Oh, man, it's another race where I lose! <laughs> <laughs> my contingency is, like, 18 seconds behind. I lose against the dumb run, too, again. It's okay. In every competition, somebody has to lose. I'm just glad it'll never be me. Yeah, I think what happened, Ryan, Two and a half minutes. Maybe when you made a noise outside, one of the NSF came outside and they opened the door for you. I think it's actually Paul that causes it because I've only seen that actually happen when Paul was chasing me. So I think it's probably they're trying to chase Paul, not chase me. Yeah, that makes sense. So I almost felt like doing 
Right, you, you know the gas grenade trick, don't you, Nathan? Uh, yeah. Where you throw the gas gas grenade at the right area and you just completely skip the level entirely because some guy just opens the Unatco HQ from inside. Yeah, because he hears it. Yeah. No, no, it's because the gas goes through and hits him slightly at the front desk. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, that triggers him into combat mode. He just opens it and it just assumes you finish the level. Mm-hmm. It's pretty interesting. It's one of those kind of like old game game things. I'm just glad my strategy of not talking to Paul actually worked out. Yeah. Man, so I mean, you could talk to Paul in like under a second, though. Yeah, but he also opens up the door and he distracts the guards, yeah. making it easy to run by them. So it's so, really a win win. I did it. So again, I was like, well, I'm going to have to talk to Paul eventually because there's a, a that point at the dock where you have to hit that door twice. So I was like, okay, you're going to hit, you're going to talk to Paul no matter what. Might as well just get it over with. But yeah, shooting that guy and getting Paul to aggro against him, that's pretty smart. And opening the door, like I feel like an That was lucky. I feel like an absolute idiot because I hacked through both the doors and now I by far lost the most runs to those. Oh yeah, the 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 lock pick was way faster. I lost so many runs trying to get that door to be opened because it only happens like 10% of the time and it was basically random, so there's nothing I can do. So when I saw the door open, it's just like, "Let's go." That's crazy. I would have. I probably wouldn't have had the patience to do that. I think I only had like three runs in total where the door is actually open like that. I mean, again, lockpick though does save you like pretty close to the same amount of time. Like it's not too much slower. But if I put a bunch of skill points in the lockpick instead of the gap gun, so like, because if you put in enough points in the gap gun, you can run normal speed with it. But if I put a bunch in the lockpick, it's almost instantaneous. I but, put uh, all of my yeah. skill points in the health pack. That way, if I got hurt, <laughs> I just healed right up. I put mine into small arms, I believe. So this run you're seeing is over 10 seconds faster than a previous run. So I guess I'm glad that I didn't stay with that run submitted. Because originally, do you want to know what my plan was to get past everyone that was in the way? What? The default pistol has just enough bullets to just kill everybody. <laughs> So my other run, if you watch it, what you'll see is every time there's someone in the way and you can't really get past them, JC just sprints up to them and before they can react, blast them in the face. That's basically what we did. We just used the taser. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. The way Deus Ex guns work is you have this huge reticle and if you stand still, it focuses down, right? Yeah, it's only instantly accurate if you spend like an ungodly amount of skill points to put it up to master. There is a non-zero percent chance that at point blank range you will still miss you can also make it 100 percent accurate with the laser mod if you mod the the pistol or any other gun that you can attach it to with the laser yeah. it's 100 percent accurate all right it's 100 percent accurate with the with the pistol i'm not sure about the other ones so anyways then i was like i felt like i had this stroke of genius when i was like oh yeah deus ex is a good game and the enemies respond to sound if I just grab the crossbow, the crossbow creates the sound at the impact, not at the creation. Oh, so you can make noise? So, yeah, so my entire run, I'm running by and I throw crossbow bolts into a corner and they turn around and I just run right by them. So that I wouldn't get hit by the, the sniper, I circle straight around him and hit him in the back with the prod to knock him out. <laughs> nice. So don't, so enemies that are stunned though, they'll still react to you and be hostile afterwards, won't they? After yeah, because there's a guy yeah. at the docks where I zapped, and I had to avoid him coming back through the docks because I know he would hit me if I didn't. But no, I mean, I knocked him out, because if you hit him in the lower back with either the uh, prod or the baton or anything else like that, it either kills him or uh, knocks him unconscious, depending on what you're using. So like, if you hit him in the knife, I'm pretty sure that kills him. But I know with the baton or the uh, prod, hit him in the lower back, and it knocks him out. So that's what I did. I strafed around him and hit him in the lower back, so I wouldn't have to deal with him on the way back. Right. Otherwise, sometimes he'd snipe me on the way back, hit you in the leg. So, slow Ryan, for so. your run... Oh, no, you couldn't. I was going to say, for your run, it might have actually been faster that instead of killing the guy on the way back or knocking him out, you could have just distracted him with the crossbow, but you completely avoid Paul. Yeah, having Paul chase me was basically the core of my entire strategy. Yeah, or I didn't know that Paul being, like, chasing you had a chance to activate the doors, like someone would come out. Yeah, like I said, it was not often, though. It was, like, 10% of the time or so. Because I think that that's one of the bigger slowdowns in my run is when I have to hit the consoles to hack into the doors. 
Yeah, I got frustrated too trying to type all that. So eventually I said, I'm going to find out a way where I can do this without having to type a single yeah, thing. <laughs> you're way more dedicated into finding weird ways to get around things than I am, I guess. So I also felt really smart when I remembered that if you hold, what is it, shift and hit the underlying number in an option, it'll automatically hit that in the menus. Oh, I wish I had known that when I was actually using the computers. I think on the run where I used the computers, it was still a run of like 255 or so. I, just, I forgot to put it on screen because I thought it was like the last one where you're supposed to have, like, the last one was 10 minutes, this one was supposed to be over 5 minutes, we wouldn't know. So yeah. I just messed around afterwards doing whatever. My first run was uh, about 240, and the one after that was, uh, like, 258. Yeah, I think it was about 5 to 10 seconds slower than mine. Yeah, so I think Ryan ekes it out again just by a little bit. Nathan in close second, and then I lose to everyone's run, including the joke run or the the extra run. Well, because I wasn't sure, you said you said you had to free him, and I thought, wait a minute. I figured as long as the little message that came up that says, hey, he's free, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what, what I, I figured too. Well. But if you do that and go back, Gunther's still butthurt, and he still gets mad at you and says, don't leave an agent, blah, blah, blah. Uh oh. So I thought, I don't know. What does Carter mean by this? And I don't want to ask and, and spoil it. Honestly... Gunther is kind of a big baby who cries over orange soda and thinks there's a conspiracy against him So him complaining is nothing new I think Gunther is the only part in my run where I actually could have saved some more time Because I stuttered just the second when I was lining up the grenade to throw it And I know I could have done it a little bit faster if I was lined up perfectly from the start Yeah, I could have saved a lot of time in my contingency run, I threw the TNT to, to blow up the uh, alarm so that they wouldn't all come running in there. Smart. I saw that. That was pretty smart. Yeah, because you can't blow it up with the GEP gun, but you blow up the TNT, and then it wouldn't set off the alarm, and then the guards wouldn't be there, so I could actually talk to Gunther immediately instead of having to kill him. When I first started doing my runs, I experimented with the GEP gun a bit because, as we all know, the GEP gun is perfect for silent takedowns. It is. Yep. It behaves kind of like the crossbow, right? Where it creates sound at the point of destruction, but not when you fire it. I want to say that's how it works. Yeah, but it's incredibly loud. It's very loud, but it's loud where something died, not where you are, which usually means you're fine. Well, on one run, I messed up because on the way back from the dock, I, was, I thought, okay, I'll take out these guys. I have enough rockets. I don't have to worry about hitting them in the back so they don't shoot me. The sound alerted like five to seven guards in the area. I had to blow them all up, and it was still pretty fast, but I had to slow down to blow them up. See, if you had Paul chasing, you could just let him deal with them. Yeah, sometimes, though, when I did that, because I tried the same thing, I couldn't always get Paul to fight the guys. Sometimes you just run straight past and I was like, come on, man. Yeah, it's probably like half of the time he actually got to me and talked to me. The other half of the time he did what I expected and shot at the enemies and distracted them so I could go by them. I had a half decent run where... I got pissed on the way back because he wouldn't attack him. And so I shot him a bunch until he aggroed and then ran while he was shooting at me. Yeah, my run in general just felt so RNG because I had to rely on Paul to do two things. He had to open up the door and then he had to never talk to me the whole time. And I mentioned to Carter, <laughs> I was like, man, this is hard because I got a lot of RNG going on. And he's like, there ain't no RNG in this game. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, there is. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, when, when you said that to me, I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, there's very little RNG in this run except you discovered, you know, a random 10% chance that the run will be good. I respect the speedrunners that go after runs that have like, yeah, there's just like a 25% chance that this run will be good, and if not, I have to hit restart. I earned the respect then. Also, I noticed the fastest way to talk to them is using the space bar. I know you said the scroll wheel, but the space bar just seems like it was even faster than that. Oh, I just had my scroll wheel unhook and just smooth it. Spacebar seems like it's basically immediate the second the text comes up. It just goes right through the menu without any sort of delay at all. That's what I wanted the gap going, so I had to go down. Yeah, I was scrolling through Paul, which means that I needed to be able to stop and get the crossbow or the gap gun, depending on what run I was trying. Mm, that makes sense. For me, I didn't care what weapon I had, so holding spacebar just mashed in on whatever the first choice was. I liked my pistol run because if you do it right, there's just enough pistol ammo to get through the whole run if you pick it up off the nsf terrorist on the dock and it gives you like one extra bullet at the end basically so i was like yeah this is good and then the night before i was going to be gone for a week i was like woke up in a cold sweat and i was like i'm an idiot there's a way faster way to do this with less rng 
with the crossbow, I could cut off like corners because I didn't need to run up to people, blast them, and keep going. I could just now with the crossbow, you could just shoot the corner and they just look at it. Like they don't really think any sound will tick them off and they'll go and investigate it. A big thing about this game is kind of like the light and the shadow. If you're in a little bit of darkness, you're almost invisible unless they are like right up next to you. Yeah, it depends, but yeah. But sound is like way more important. I eventually realized none of that matters because you have one health pack and on easy mode, that's just enough where you could trudge through oh, yeah. and completely ignore everybody and you'll do just fine and never die. That was another strategy I tried out was like, what if I just tank it? That's what I did pretty much. Except for the sniper, because sometimes he'd take my leg off. Yeah, the sniper I, did get me a couple of times. Like, I would run by him, and I would miss the zapper on him. So I just kept running, but eventually he would shoot yeah. me in the back of the head, and I'd die. You know, that's something we didn't explain, is that there's two different difficulties that it's viable to speedrun this game on. The first is easy mode, and the second is the hardcore mode. It's realistic. Realistic yeah. mode. And the only difference with realistic is that basically the damage for everyone is turned up, right? That's, that's, that's what it is. Yeah, you take more damage, and the enemies take more damage. I tried to do realistic, but I think I ended up going on easy mode just because it was better for me to be able to tank more shots as I was yeah. running. Yeah, for me, Maybe from like the very start, I decided I wasn't going to worry about shooting them. I was just going to rush by them. So when I was doing my pistol run, and then this one a bit, a big part of my strategy was hacking and then turning on the turrets to clear out rooms for me. So that I tried uh, doing hardcore on for a bit because they would die faster, but eventually it just it didn't really matter. I don't know if they take more damage in realistic than in easy. I'm not sure, but... I thought in sure. realistic, everything takes more damage. Uh, I can't remember. I want to say that's what it is, is that enemies and JC take more damage. Yeah, but in easy mode, the enemies take more damage as well, so... One thing I want to bring up is the experience levels with this game, because all I know about this game is playing this one level for this video. Ah, man, you should yeah. play it more if only you had some way to do so. And, uh, Carter, you played the game all the way through, right? Uh, yes. So I played the game... Uh, Nathan, it's Nathan's favorite game, right? Oh, yeah. Well, it's the best game of all time, so... Uh, I do not disagree with that statement. It is definitely within the top 10 best games of all time. Be definitely best in its genre. Nathan pestered me to play it, and he set me up with the, uh, mod pack that makes the visuals of the game a lot more bearable. The original, it's, you know, it's pretty old, but it came out in 2000. Yeah, I just, it's just, uh, the new vision comes with that and the Deus Exe, so it runs better on modern systems. When I reinstalled this, I didn't put the mod on yet, and I played just, like, one run in the old style, and it really does improve the game using the new one. Yeah, nice. And I played it for a bit. I finished Hong Kong, and then I took a break. For like a couple months, I didn't play it. And then I got a week off of work. And in one day, I played it for like eight hours straight and finished it from there. Because once the story starts going and you really kind of know what you're doing, it just goes. It's like a good book. You can't put it down. It's definitely one of the best games. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to try, you should at least get to Hong Kong. It was around Hong Kong that hooked me. Yeah, I got to Hong Kong and I finished it and then I just took a break. I don't think there's any particular reason why. I think I just wasn't like super into it and I just had like other things to do. But there's also a problem with Hong Kong in that I have no sense of direction and I kept getting lost. You playing it all the way through like that reminds me of a mercenary. It was a random 3DO game I played to trap my 3DO and I just ended up playing the whole game all through in one sitting. Yeah, there is a special kind of game that just lets this just encourages you to do that where you just play it all the way through and i guess here is where we'll call for like spoilers so if you want to play the game wait should i leave do you, do, you, do you want do you want to play the game ah don't worry about it. you guys have talked about the game so much i have a general idea of what happens anyway so it doesn't matter I mean, maybe you can mute yourself for, like, some of the end-level spoilers when me and Nathan get there. Yeah, but I gotta edit the video, too. <laughs> oh shoot. You're right. <laughs> edit it 90% of the way through, then pitch it at me and all. So I'll be like, I don't know what's happening in this part of the video, and I'm not allowed to know, and you guys are just <laughs> cursing it, all of my viewers. Yeah, and it just turns into complete madness of me and Nathan talking over each other. Yeah, we'll call it for spoilers here. So if you want to play the game, cannot recommend it more that you go in without hearing anything about it, basically. See, I don't need to play it because I'm already the best there is at playing it, apparently. Yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah, Hong Kong. So that's a great, like, introductory level to the game. Like, that's like a good, like, vertical slice of the game, I think, is Hong Kong. Because there's a bunch of problems you're presented with, and you can solve them all in, like, different ways. Yeah, you see, even in this video, opening the doorway had three different ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you either hack it, you lockpick it, or you get your big brother to do it. Thanks, bro, you're the best. Yeah, if you figure out certain parts, you can go straight to it or pull it along for a while by somebody like you did. Oh, we should mention, the only reason we had to talk to the bum on the dock is to make this video long enough for it to actually be a competition. 
Yeah, so if you look at actual speedruns of this level where they don't get Gunther and they just go straight up to the top, it's done in like under a minute. It's crazy. Because you pretty much just run straight forward, hit the door, go upstairs, talk to the guy, right? Well, you can just kill him from outside, I believe. You can snipe him if he's up there in the statue. Can you? Yeah. The other way to speedrun this level is like 30 seconds where you grab a, gra a gas grenade that's in a crate at the very start of the level. You go to a door that opens up later after you get the terrorist leader and you toss it like at the corner of the door basically and the gas just barely clips in to hit like the receptionist that's behind the desk he'll get up and open the door and then it just like wonks out and it just assumes that you finished the level since that door is not supposed to be open yet yeah so you don't even have to go near the statue hey ryan what didn't you have a creative way to finish this level what you mean when i was smoking right in this face and i died from smoking too hard no no i mean the one where you had to ask me if it was within the rules Oh, that. Okay, well, now you got me thinking of the other thing first, though. So, what happened was, is I talked to the terrorist leader, and I was at such low health that I zapped him, and then I smoked the cigarette, and that took away all the health that I had left. But going back, the rules were very unspecific. It said, basically, oh, you got to talk to the bum, then you got to do the freeing Gunther, and then you got to go and talk to the terrorist guy. There was no order specified, and I realized, wait a minute, I'm doubling back a lot. I can do these out of order and save so much time, but apparently that's not allowed. You say there was no order to it, but then you explain that I said it as you talk to the bum, then you talk to Gunther, then you talk to the terrorist leader. Okay, but that's not what the rules you typed out actually said, though. You did say you have to end it by talking to the terrorist leader, so... Yeah... But anyways, that works because as soon as you talk to the terrorist leader, the entire island, like, deagros and, like, the, the NSF terrorists kind of disappear. Well, that's because the, the Unaco trooper is coming and cleaning it up, but yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't get rid of the bum. He still stays at the dock. You know, that's actually one thing I kind of wish this game had a little more of, which is revisiting old areas after you finish them. Like, you go to Hong Kong, and you do everything in Hong Kong, then you leave. You go to New York twice, once when it's once when it's peaceful, and then once when it's under martial law, right? Yeah, it might even be three times you go to Hell's Kitchen. At least, at least two, yeah. Do you go to New York three times what there's the first time and there's do you save paul and talk to the informant guy on the same one or is that two separate mm, those are that's two separate ones oh, okay so yeah you do go to new york three times yeah hell's kitchen specifically so wait the level we're on is that new york that's liberty island so in the deus ex lore there was a terrorist attack on the statue of liberty where the head got blown off in my video i look up and get a full view of the statue because i figured it'd be useful and yeah it's there's no head and there's no torch it's not holding the torch anymore you can find the head later at like a memorial type thing and the torch i believe is somewhere on this level just falling down yeah and like liberty island becomes like the headquarters of unatco which stands for nathan United Nations Anti-Terrorist Coalition. Yes. Right. So yeah, you visit New York three times. Paris once. Paris twice at least, I think. Wait. I think you just go to Paris once. And then you go to the yeah. Templars and then you're done. Yeah, you're right. You have the Air Force Base in California, Vandenberg, I believe. Yeah, so you're talking about revisiting places, right? Yeah, I'm talking about how, like, you don't double back on a lot of maps, especially, like, the hub-type maps, like Hell's Kitchen, Hong Kong, Liberty Island. You go to Liberty Island, like, two or three times. At that point, it's mostly just the Unatco HQ part, though. Yeah. I basically want more Deus Ex game. I just want more of it to exist. It's a really fun game. That reminds me, there is more Deus Ex out there that you haven't played because there's that one stupid way uh -huh. I tried to cheat this through that didn't work at all. I tried using the PlayStation 2 version to see, can you go faster? The answer was <laughs> definitely no, because the PlayStation 2 version, it's not powerful as a PC. So they had to block off a lot of areas, so you had to like walk around things. Like, this is way worse. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that about the PlayStation 2 version. Oh, so it wouldn't render the long range stuff at the same time? Yeah, like all the long hallways were blocked off with stuff. And I think even the path me and you took isn't available in the PlayStation 2 version at all. Oh, so you have to go the way I did. Yeah, that was way too slow. I would have never won doing that. <laughs> you know, another interesting tidbit about Deus Ex rendering is due to a kind of random memory limitation, the Twin Towers are not in the background image of New York City in this level. Because of a terrorist attack. Because Yeah, and they, they wrote it into the lore as a terrorist attack. And the game was released in 2000. Yep. Well, 1999 first, then Game of the Year edition 2000. What about the PlayStation 2 version? Does it have the Twin Towers? No. Probably not, considering they had to block off parts of the actual <laughs> level. 
I don't know, Nathan, this is kind of your game. Why don't you speak a bit on it? I don't know. It's a really good game. And the developers thought of almost everything for whatever situation you can choose to handle something. Like there's a terrorist situation in the subway where they've got hostages and a bunch of bombs rigged with tripwires. And you can go in guns blazing and blow it up and, yeah, Paul will get pretty mad. Say it was a hostage situation was a disaster, blah, blah, blah. Or you can sneak in and kill all the terrorists or knock them all out. There's a couple of different ways to go about it. Or, as some of the developers thought of, you can sneak past all the terrorists sneak past the hostages and all that and just get on the train and leave. It's technically a side objective. And so you yeah. can just leave and, and Paul will be really mad, of course. And JC tells him I was pursuing the primary objective. The fact that you can do that, those kind of things are all throughout the game where they thought of everything a player might do. You can just leave the hostage situation, just sneak through it. So does the game have consequences depending on how you finish the level? Well, people will react differently, definitely. If you don't kill anybody, Anna will be disappointed. But you don't get like a different ending or anything? Uh, not a different ending, but... The game's story is linear. They originally planned for it to be branching, actually, but it ended up being linear. They cut out part of the game. And at the very end, there is a big level where you have to get one of three different endings. And it doesn't really matter, like, what you do in the level, now that I think back to it. But then, yeah, you're pretty much given, like, three button prompts, which... Kind of a shame for such an open game to kind of end with a, hey, do you want A, B, or C? But, you know, it works out. Yeah. It's not Mass Effect levels of disappointing. <laughs> you don't get the same CG with three different colors. It is different endings. You, I mean, they're pretty radical different endings, and yet somehow all three are canon in the sequel. Well, some talk about the sequel, but yeah. Well, don't talk bad about the sequel like that. I've actually played a decent amount of that one, and I barely played any at all for this version of the game. Yeah, because you heard it, the people didn't like it, so you played it. Yeah, you know, I started my channel with bad FPS games. People say, hey, this game's bad. I'm going to play that then. It wasn't that bad at all. And to clarify quickly, when we say sequel, we're talking about Invisible War. We're not talking about Human Revolution or Mankind Divided. Those are prequels. I know a lot of people register Deus Ex as those games, not the original. Yeah, and the prequels because they were made before this game, but the developers have hold them back for years until computers were powerful enough. That's exactly what the problem was. Oh, you know what we haven't talked about? The best part of the game, the man himself, JC, Jesus Christ, Denton. What, is, is this dialogue, the one-liners? No, just everything about him. I don't know if it's he's supposed to have like a dark sense of humor or if they thought he was being cool or what, but he comes off as like this dry, sarcastic. He just comes off as if he has like no real idea of how to interact with other people. <laughs> and... Yeah, <that's> <laughs> It's kind of like that, since that's his backstory, you know, raised to be super special and like this, this augmented guy, is like, is that on purpose that he's really awkward? Yeah, it is for sure. I remember, I think they told the voice actor and some, at least for part of it, it'd be a little more robotic, less emotional. Part of that is for the player can insert themselves into the character, self-insert kind of things. So they don't, JC doesn't necessarily react in one way or the other until you choose. But also part of that's to reflect, is he more machine than man kind of things, that kind of. This is kind of random, but I like that they let you choose your skin color, and then also Paul has the same skin color. Wait, really? I think so. I mean, it was so dark and hard to see anything that maybe I was wrong, but he looked like he was black. I always play as default JC, but if you choose, but if you choose black JC, this is the only thing I think his skin color affects in the whole game. There's like one voice line when you meet this lady in Hong Kong, and what does she say, Nathan? Oh, in the original, she says, ah. Mr. J.C. Denton into fresh, as dark and serious as your brother Paul. But she doesn't say dark, I don't think <laughs> so, if your character's black. I don't know what she says instead, but she doesn't say as dark and serious as your brother Paul. Yeah, it's pretty funny. But other than that, he's just dry. He turns the game into, like, bordering on comedy at points. Like, when you meet the FEMA chief. Oh, at Area 51? Oh, yeah, Area 51 gets involved in this game. In case you don't know, this game is basically every conspiracy theory that was floating around in the late 90s smashed into one, and they went, yeah, it's all true. You get everything in this game. Templars, Rothschilds, aliens. And that's another point, talking about that, talking about the FEMA chief and stuff. A lot of bosses, you don't have to fight them, you just run past them. Like, there's an ocean lab you're at, and there's a guy that shows up once you've gotten what you need. You already got what you need there, so you can leave. But he tries to fight you, and you can fight him, or you can just... Run. Just slam the door in his face, get on the helicopter, leave. I mean, he'll show up again later, but just leave. And what does it say when he shows up later? 
Here I am again, like your own reflection repeated in a hall of mirrors. And JC says, well, then guess I that makes me one ugly son of a son bitch. bitch. <laughs> How'd my face get all marked up with bioelectrics? At which point, what, the FEMA chief just kind of, like, grumbles and fights you, right? <laughs> like, like, he that, just yeah. kind of takes it. Another random question, is the whole game as dark as this level was? No. So it's just the first level where I have to do ridiculous stuff in the video editor where it kind of blows out the colors just to make it where you can actually see well, what the heck is actually going on. It is a dark game, but other levels have better lighting. Like, everything pretty much takes place at night, I think. I think, like, one level yeah. takes place in the evening. Doesn't the game canonically only take place over the course of, like, a day or something? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I think it, it's at least a couple of days. I'm not sure. Because isn't the point right before you enter the final bunker after you nuke Area 51 from the base in California, isn't it, like, just starting to be dawn at that point? So, yeah, I think so. Shoot, just like Infra. But yeah, it's, it's because of the... It's, it's because of the... Yeah, kind of. Because of the light and dark thing and the stealth and being in darkness. Uh, I think that's part of it. But yeah, the game is pretty dark, so... It's pretty dark, but anytime you're inside, it's pretty well lit. It's not a problem for playing, but for recording, it's, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, even when I was playing it, I maxed out my monitor's brightness just to be able to make sure <laughs> I could see exactly what was going on. Oh, jeez. You just weren't immersed, man. Man, I wasn't here to be immersed. I was here to go fast. That's fair. It is an immersive sim. It is. There's a lot of things that you don't see in a lot of modern games. It's a nice touch. Like, if you throw something at people... Like you can pick up the potted plants in the office and you there's a basketball or something. You can go around throwing the basketball at people. They get annoyed and go, well, it's, you know, I don't understand. What are you doing? JC, stop that. Stop horsing around. Stuff like that. Uh, just like a normal person would react. I remember the first point in the game where I went, whoa, they thought of everything. And it's when you get into the UNACO HQ and I was doing my usual you know, like RPG thing where I'm just going through every door before I go to the guy that I need to talk to. I'm trying to explore the whole building. And during that, I go into the bathrooms, the male bathroom, and then I go into the woman's bathroom. And there's a woman in there and she goes, JC, what are you doing? This is sexual harassment. At which point... I shouldn't say that, but yeah. I ignored her and I still searched the cabinets. And then I left. So then I went to go talk to the boss, the chief of UNATCO, Manderley. And at the end of the conversation, he goes, JC, we've gotten reports of you going to the woman's restroom. Watch yourself. And it does nothing. It means nothing. But it was still like, I just had this moment of like, whoa. Counterpoint. For me, when I first, the very first time I played the game, I was walking around the dock, I picked up the trash bag, and I ran to Paul. And then when you talk to Paul, your guy just chucks the trash bag and it bounces off his head and he doesn't even acknowledge it or anything. Well, that's because he has to talk to you, but yeah. If you throw it at him, if you throw it at him after talking to him, he'll acknowledge it, but yeah. Yeah, it's because he's already stuck in a script. Once characters lock into talking, that's kind of all they do. That is something that happened on my run a bunch of times, actually. When I was getting to the door for Gunther, before I realized I could blow it up, I would get trapped in that doorway, and then I would have Paul talking to me as I'm getting shot at from <laughs> every direction by the enemies right there. Yeah, I got Gunther to activate, and he ran forward. But then as we got to the door, he started talking, and the NSF outside started shooting me. I don't know. I don't know. There's not too much else to talk about this game unless we just kind of go through a full story synopsis, because... Yeah. That'd have to be a different video. I mean, I can remember the specific lines that the lady says in the bathroom. YBR, Deus Ex, Let's Play, what? <laughs> Nobody would watch it. Too violent, too many guns. Manderly, when you go in the restroom, he says, Oh, and JC, stay out of the ladies' restroom. And that kind of behavior embarrasses the agency more than it does you. Yeah, like, we've been talking for, like, 40 minutes now, and I feel like we've barely scratched the surface of everything Deus Ex has to offer in terms of both quality story, quality gameplay, and just, like, humorous moments. We haven't talked about JC's laugh. <laughs> There's only one of them in the entire game, but yeah. There's only one time JC laughs in the entire game, and it's a bizarrely specific sequence of events you have to get to it. Yeah, like, like you have to threaten a guy into by killing his whole gang and threaten him into giving you lambs, which are like bombs, basically. And if your inventory is full, JC says, hold on, I have to drop something. <laughs> and that's the only <laughs> laugh in the entire game. It's like the only time he drops his like robotic persona in the entire game. Even when he's consoling a woman after her father died, he still just comes off as this, like, emotionless sociopath. Well, a lot of times he has emotions, but it's, it's very, very muted for sure. Yeah. And you can tell when he's angry and stuff, but it's always still muted. 
maybe this is me like projecting onto him as I was playing, but because of the whole muted behavior, the entire time he feels really like blasé about everything that's going on around him. Again, when the FEMA chief shows up, he gives his weirdly poetic spiel to JC, and JC just goes, yeah, you're ugly, and then bites him. Yeah, your own reflection in all of mirrors. Well, I guess that makes me one ugly son of a bitch. Man, Ryan's gonna have fun editing those ones. Oh, I know. It's gonna be great. You know what I might do? I might just put the tick that says, hey, YouTube, this has some cursing and be lazy. Actually, just nuke a place or whatever. Yeah, so that's another thing about the game. So at the beginning, Paul gives you this spiel about, like, hey, don't go and just kill the NSF. There are people too, JC, please. Remember, this is not a training exercise. There'll be real people out there tonight, JC. And then Paul just runs and guns them all down trying to just give you a rocket launcher. If you aggro (laughs) Paul at any point, he takes no hesitation in shooting people. Yeah, you shoot him at all times, he'll just pull out his assault rifle and start blowing away. But then later in the game, as part of a plan that Paul is totally A-OK with, you launch a nuclear missile at Area 51. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You redirect it because it was going to go somewhere else. At the last second, you put change the location that it's supposed to go to, to Area 51. Yeah, it was going to be in an empty desert, right? Oh, yeah, you would think. But no, they launch it right at their enemy's headquarters and just wipe them out. Which So at that point in the game, I had been doing non-lethal the whole time. Because I was like, all right, Paul, I'm going to do non-lethal. In any stealth game, I always try and do non-lethal first before doing lethal. Oh, yeah. Wimps. Me too, but I wouldn't lock myself in totally. Yeah, well, that's at that point, I went... I just killed who knows how many people through my direct action of aiming it at the base instead of like the empty desert or the ocean. So at that point, I was just like, all right, and I just started killing people left and right. I didn't care anymore. But there was something wrong because I had spent the entire game being pacifist. I had no skills or augs based on based on combat. <laughs> the only thing I did is I just had a sniper rifle and I would just snipe people from a mile away. The gray aliens, which. Greys are real in Deus Ex. That's another conspiracy theory they throw in there. And they're at Area 51. That's not a theory. You're right. They just cloned the... I think in-game, the lore thing is they cloned them. The Roswell alien, right? Yeah, they, they cloned a bunch of the Roswell aliens. They're basically like... Uh, they're basically just monkeys. Like, they act monkeys, like monkeys. Yeah. They're not that smart. Because they don't have any language or anything. to clones. They're really strong, and they shoot, like, psychic bullets at you at the end part of, like, Area 51. I think it was Area 51, or maybe it was the basement of Vandenberg. You know the best part is you guys can say whatever you want, and I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and we could basically go off talking like Alex Jones. Yeah, and at the very end, JC gets in the alien spaceship, and they, they fly. And fly okay. Away. Yeah, it makes sense, sure. Yeah. Nuke the, the entire planet from orbit. Yeah, that's why they had to do prequels instead of sequels. That makes sense. Mm-hmm, because I mean, yeah. the Earth is destroyed, so. Depending on your ending, the Earth pretty much does get destroyed. No. Just the internet. Well, okay, we could talk about the three endings since we're in spoilers and Ryan doesn't care. It's just the internet, though. Yeah, but at that point, that basically means there's going to be mass panic and riot in-universe. Oh, yeah, I mean, the Earth's still there and people are still there. It's just, you know. Don't worry if you're wrong. Nobody watches a video that's this long anyways. You're right. The story of Deus Ex is there's hot topical. There's a pan- global pandemic going on without a real cure, just treatment. But the treatment kind of gets filtered to the top of the elites. You eventually find out it's a conspiracy. The virus is manufactured, and you have to stop it. Along the way, you meet this guy named Tracer Tong, who wants everyone to return to Monkey and just destroy the internet. At the end of the game, you also have to face off against this rich billionaire named uh, Bob Page. And Bob Page's grand idea is to upload his consciousness into a satellite and just become the internet. Well, like, integrate himself with his nano-augmentations that were, like, kind of based on JC's. Yeah. He's, like, the prototype. And uh, integrate himself with the AI and become, like, the government of the planet, basically. Yeah. So at the end, you're given your three buttons, and you basically join the Illuminati. Who Bob Page broke off from, he betrayed him. So you join the Illuminati and go back to the old rule before Bob Page betrayed him trade them which basically means you keep the status quo in all senses then you have the tracer tong ending where you just delete the internet basically you delete all global communications <laughs> you basically just turn the whole world dark the idea is they'll go back to living in like small villages type situations local governments yeah, yeah local governments really think that would work even if the plan succeeded because yeah 
People would just riot. It's not like people forgot how to make the internet. It's going to come back. Well, you can't just look it up online how to do it. Oh, shoot, you're right. We just lost all of the collective knowledge of humanity that's on Wikipedia. And then the third ending is that JC himself joins with Helios to become not a, like, tyrannical overlord of a government, but more like a careful, watchful eye. Benevolent dictator. Yeah. It's a real philosophical ending because it kind of makes you think like you know you don't want bob page to have his power but when it's you it's totally okay but like is it really okay that you do that but then you yeah. kind of look at your other options you're like are any of these better i mean he keeps up he keeps up that attitude up to the end so at one point you know bob page he's going egomaniac mode and he says i will burn like the brightest star jc says you're gonna burn all right <laughs> yeah, JC is watching this man try and upload himself and become like the world dictator, and he's still slinging one liners. Like, he just doesn't care about what's going on. He cares, but he's really cool while he cares, or he thinks so, at least. I mean, he is pretty cool. It's the same thing that some people say about, like, Jotaro and JoJo, where it's like, he's constantly thinking about, like, what can I say to be cool, but then he says it, and he's actually, like, a total geed. So it's like the exact opposite of the character from Infra, who doesn't think about being cool, he just is. Yeah, he's the complete opposite of Inframan, where Inframan is blasé, but he's blasé just because he just just could not care about what's going on. JC probably cares like about how he looks. Inframan just wants to go home and eat his like borscht or whatever they're eating. He, he wants to take them pictures, too. He'll be like, interesting, click. Well, that shouldn't be like that, click. He's kind of jaded about the, the whole situation, but he still cares. Entire subway tunnel collapses 10 feet from him. I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Like, man, that's a weird through line that we drew between our first two games. It's just the absolute deadpan nature of the protagonist. Hey, I gotta bring it back to Infra because I ain't know nothing about this game. That's entirely fair. Infra and Deus Ex, both top of their class in what they're trying to do. Infra also the only game that does what Infra do. I don't think anyone's tried to do what Infra's done, but... For, for what could be considered a walking sim with some puzzles thrown in, Infra is way more entertaining than most of those. Alright, so I guess we should probably wrap up the Deus Ex video since since we ran out of steam here. Yep, I ran out of things a while ago when you guys started talking about the later levels and I was just completely lost. That's because you haven't played it. You should play it though. It's a really good game. No, that's not important. What's important is we go fast. I was going to win for sure. And everyone who's made it this far in the video, first of all, Thanks to like the 3% of you that make it this far. <laughs> Second, play Deus Ex. It goes on sale for super cheap all the time. Get it. There's a Steam guide for getting it to work on modern systems. It's, it's really good. Well, maybe we'll put it in the description. Ryan, edit it out if we do not put it in the description. <laughs> you can't do it like that because I edit the video, then I write the description and put the description. I wouldn't yeah. know. I'm not a psychic. What well, are you saying, Carter? Be better. Anyways... Deus Ex, it's a game. 